If I had studied coral when I was a graduate student, I would never have worked on fish because coral, they're just so amazing. I'm Mary Hagedorn and I work for the Smithsonian's National Zoological Park. I am a cryobiologist, actually a physiologist and marine biologist, um, and I study the reproduction of coral and I'm trying to cryopreserve uh, sperm, eggs, embryos, and stem cells from coral to try and conserve them. Coral in the, around the world is suffering because of local and global causes. Some of the local causes might be sedimentation, deforestation, agricultural use, or overfishing where you, they actually go through with trawls and destroy the reef. Coral, in addition, have to deal with global causes. So even if they're not near human populations, like um, the coral that's in the northern Hawaiian Islands, they're not near any people, but they are still suffering from the global causes. And the global causes are the overuse and burning of, of fossil fuels, producing greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide. And that's warming the earth and, in turn, warming the oceans. And because coral live at their upper extreme, for us that would be like, say we lived at always at 105 and you boosted us to 110 during the summer, many of us would die. Same thing happens with coral. When we raise them one or two degrees centigrade, they, they get stressed, they get diseases. Um, there's a, a number of things that happen because they are stressed. In addition, you also have um, ocean acidification. The ocean acts as a sink for CO2. It pulls it down from the air. But as it's doing that, it's, it's making the ocean more acidic. It's kind of like um, the way when we add carbon dioxide to water, we make soda. And your mother says, don't drink a lot of soda. It's not because necessarily because of the sugar, but because the acid in the soda is bad for your teeth. It erodes, it erodes the, the um, structure of your teeth, just like it's starting to erode um, the coral. It's very similar kinds of structures. Coral has, serves a lot of ecosystems functions um, for us and it's important because even though it's only a small percentage of the Earth's surface, like two and a half times the size of California, it is the small dynamo of the ocean. It provides um, nurseries and homes for about 25% of all creatures in the ocean, which is billions and billions of, of creatures. It provides pharmaceuticals like HIV AIDS drugs, um, cancer drugs, antibiotics. It protects our coastlines and our cities and our homes. I'm leading a team and we're looking, we're using in, um, human fertility techniques and we're applying them to coral. And we're, we're looking at a number of different kinds of tissues like sperm, eggs, embryo, even stem cells. And right now, We've been successful in cryopreserving the sperm from a number of different kinds of corals. And we can take that sperm and thaw it out and we can make new coral babies. These cryopreserved or cold collections act as a repository for scholarly uh, endeavors, but also to potentially restore and sustain wild populations. When I first started this, this work, I was the only person in the world doing it. There's a few labs now that are trying to cryopreserve eggs and um, cells from coral, but our lab, the Smithsonian is a leader right now in coral cryopreservation. I feel a little bit like there's a little bit of art and there, there's a lot of science, you know, that, that makes coral really cool.